But it's like. Sorry, I'm eating a cookie now. Did you guys see? There's wow, well, you got to chew. Mm, yeah. Uh, there's, video, <laughs> there's video of the. Uh, the Spencer punch. Yeah. Well, yeah, let's watch should it. We, should we record our reactions yeah. live? Yeah. Folks? This is the, right. we are watching for the first time the video of Richard Spencer getting punched. I'm not a neo-Nazi. I'm a post-Nazi. Yeah, he's like a punk arguing about his subculture. Yeah. It's not cool. Oh! Yeah. Oh! Got him. Oh, Got that him. Was hard. That was good too. Yo, is there a slow mo? Is there a slow fucking soul on, dude? Oh, he's got the hair, bitch. Yeah. 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 This is Chapo Shop House. We are broadcasting live from Point Pleasant, Pleasant Place, Pleasant Mountain, the, the pleasant neighborhood of Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, where we are covering the inauguration front to back. The full deck. We have all hands on deck to cover this show. Me, Will Meneker. Me, Matt Christman. Amber Ali Frost. Felix Biederman, commander of the Pleasant Boys Trump Defense <laughs> Regiment. Virgil, Texas. And Sam Chris. <laughs> Special guest Sam Chris joining us for this show. Our foreign correspondent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's he's from the he's from the BBC. Um yeah, I'm no from we're, Breitbart London. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah, we're uh we're hanging out in DC. We we we're, came down. We're just chilling in the beltway. <laughs> covering the inauguration from front to back and from ass to ass. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to start off the show the last time we went on the road we were in philadelphia and i want to say philadelphia great city loved it fantastic Fabulous. washington dc Shit. awful Trash. hate garbage it. Fuck whole world. America's <laughs> office the worst. worst just worst place i've ever been in my life it's like a kind of american pyongyang <laughs> you did however mention that all the grass was dead and i just want to defend us it is january hold on a minute though no, i've been there in the dead of summer <laughs> the only difference between the mall now and the mall in the summer is that in the summer there's giant plumes of dust <laughs> it's like worse somehow and yeah. just as desolate and fucking just damned and hellborn i got shit on twitter for saying that all the grass was dead and like i've seen dead grass it's not usually black <laughs> yeah <laughs> way no worse. i mean it's it is worse. poison air here yeah. uh you mind if i wild out fam <laughs> Go for it. DC is actually an enjoyable city. There are issues in its urban design, but this is a deliberate tactic made by the original planners of the city who thought if a foreign army invaded it, they would like them to be confused. Unfortunately, due to American supremacy, this only causes wonks to get lost and get knocked out games <laughs> in alleys. However, DC has a world of enjoyable cuisine, fun nightlife, <laughs> and it is, and it is the one of the three places in America where Jeffrey Epstein can charter his jet. <laughs> <laughs> I you like know, DC. We're gonna get we're gonna get into the more of the ways that uh, everyone but Felix just despises this nightmare city. But <laughs> I, I like think we it. should begin now. It's Friday. It finally happened. Donald Trump is our president. Uh, how do you like that? How do you like how do you like them apples? Boston strong. No, but um. <laughs> Uh, how do you want to kick this off? I think we just said, uh, what, uh, dumbest, fattest president ever? Dumbest, fattest, oldest president we've ever had. Unambiguous on all counts. I it's really going to be an experiment. The dumbest president, surely, was a guy who, on his inaugural address, refused to wear a coat and died of pneumonia three days later, right? William Henry Harrison, huge yeah. cell phone. Yeah. He's a Possibly Hoosier. the best president in American history. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, that's he was the least did, president did in American the least history. Evil. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. He also had a 90-minute... Uh, uh, inaugural address yeah. which is amazing because when he got elected slavery was like not talked about as an issue most things were not really considered up for debate like literally the only great. the only topic of debate in 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 Washington was tariffs this motherfucker found a way to talk until he died about tariffs. <laughs> my, and that is like, that's like a, that's like a, he could have been an amazing poster. That, yeah. In that the modern poster era. My, my ancestor, um, Felix Biederman uh, Jew, uh, Sr. <laughs> I was the <laughs> only. Trying to think of a Jewish name, you yeah, literally uh, just said uh, Jew. He, he had a normal white man name. His name was John Smith, but he actually just had the parentheses around it. <laughs> but. Anyway, he wrote for um, he wrote explainers in his time when he came to America, and his was like 
you know, the silent walkishness of William Henry Harrison. <laughs> Why he's secretly way more progressive than you think he is. <laughs> well, you know, and he was like, this is exhilarating, his tariff speech. You know, Hoosiers love William Henry Harrison because he was, he was governor of Indiana. Yep. And we actually are extremely proud of his legacy. Well, so but yeah. now we have Mike Pence. Woo! Yeah, who is going to be the real president within six months because Trump is done for. Oh, There's yeah. no way he's going to last. That, right? oh, and we yeah. saw how presidential evil Mike Pence was when yeah. he was taking yeah. Yeah. He so is, Let's talk he about... Is yeah. the vill- he is the president in a John Carpenter movie. Yeah. Who turns like an entire state into a jail? <laughs> Trump looked, Trump looked completely fucking terrified the moment he got up there. But Pence, Pence, Pence no. who is a he's a cold blooded killer. He has ham. the t- stern, lipless sneer of a homophobic closet queen, and he will kill us all. Oh yeah, he is now, the psycho we've been warned about. We we watched like the actual inauguration, like the whole thing where they're up on the day. So I want to talk about that, but. You, Trump did look terrified, but then we kept watching C-SPAN, and then they had this whole thing where, like, they walk to the Capitol building, and then he signs a bunch of stuff. He looked happy signing things. He loved it. Yeah, he he loved signing, signing things. Well, he's, yeah. like a little, he's like a kid. You put him in a chair. Everyone's around him. They're looking at him. They're smiling. <laughs> they give him a little thing to write his name on. By the way, just parenthetically, if anyone has ever looked at Donald Trump's signature... The, it's like he can't even say it, write his name correctly. Donu Donu. Yeah, something. it's like that's yeah. not an like you look at it. And you're like, there's way too many letters. It looks what like are you D- writing? Oh, and then what is wrong with you? Like you can't even write your own fucking name. That's how stupid you are. McDonald's arches. Yeah, it's so. It's like this guy's like that signature is going to be on a fucking authorization for a drone strike within 24 hours from now. But like, wasn't he tweeting like as soon as he he signed the like? Yeah, I think that's the most one of the most endearing things about the man. Like, it's something I have. In common with him, online. you know. Every time I get a new job, I immediately start tweeting. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. also getting owned all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, he posts a lot and watches a lot of TV, so he is relatable in that. He's like, if Trump was born in slightly different circumstances, he would he be w- Roxanne Gay. You, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> if he had more time, he would be like following the NYT fridge account. He would be <laughs> writing things on Medium, like, so I wrote a thing about the changing challenges of a newsroom. He's just, he is a media blowhard who loves media gossip bullshit, but he just so happens to have been born into a ultra rich, influential family. And that will make you a psycho. What about the actual spectacle of it all? What did you guys make of the. We watched so it on TV weird. this right. morning. So, Maybe you, you saw the periscope. You might have saw we periscoped so, ourselves screaming I mean, at yeah, the television. Like, yeah, we watched You can still watch the periscope, it's still up. We are basically just screaming at the television because of how just surreal and horrifying it was. Uh, I mean, I, I was there on the ground because, like an idiot, I decided to actually go to the inauguration. You also, actually, you also spent New Year's Eve in Times Square. I, well. I have spent New Year's Eve in Times Square. Hashtag epic um, fail. Um, I, 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 Sam went, the rest of us just stole inauguration ballot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm like the, the American normie. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, we went to Red Lobster last night, so we've got one up. <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll get, get into all good. We'll get to that. Oh, I can beat you. I went to Comet Ping Pong Pizza last night. Really? Oh. Did you have the quote unquote pepperoni and quote unquote <laughs> cheese? Uh, well, like, you know how McDonald's has a secret menu? Comet Ping Pong Pizza also <laughs> has a secret menu. Animal style. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, what has it? Did you get to the bottom of this whole caper? Well, I mean, I, I walked in and I thought, like, the best way to investigate this would just be to fire around directly into the ceiling and then walk <laughs> out again. <laughs> um, so, yeah, mystery solved. So wait, Sam. So you were you were on the National Mall today? What, like, wow! What was I this? Was, like you were I was in the near, neighborhood. I was near the National Mall. Well, there was a I lot got, of people uh, out. What was the scene like? Yeah, like um, okay, it was fucking terrifying. Um, it was like the quietest political event I've ever seen in my life. Everyone standing there, kind of very politely. There were a bunch of pros. Like um, like we're in uh, on Seventh Street. There was a huge line to try and get into the National Mall. Uh, and all of the MAGA guys were there and just kind of talking to each other and looking kind of gruesomely happy with their kind of matte faces. Um, and then and then there were the uh, a bunch of protesters standing around, you know, with their signs, Trump equals Putin, whatever. And they weren't fighting. They weren't even shouting at each other. It was It was just a kind of pathetic resignation of defeat. Uh, and then... Um, then the inauguration started, and we still weren't in the mall, so uh, we craned over and watched it on hear? someone else's phone. Well, um, <laughs> like you could, you could, could you hear, hear it, the but because, or because we were around the corner, you couldn't like hear what he was saying. You know, just these kind of 
Donald Trumpy noises that were just identifiably coming from his mouth, but you couldn't really make out what he was saying. And then we were just reading the subtitles on people's phones, just like uh, like all through the crowd, kind of hundreds of miniature Donald Trumps like cradled in people's hands. Yeah, everybody was commenting about how fascist it was, and I could see that, like especially since he said "America first it a bunch of a times. Turn. Yeah, but for me, it was just it's just stupid. He sounds stupid. He sounds just like no, a no, stupid no, no, no. guy. Before that, when he was like. Americans have been left behind. And I was like, yeah, this is why people voted for him. And someone was like, yeah, it's really hard to believe that America is already great, didn't win out over this. Well, no, and then he took a hard well, yeah, they, and then he took a hard turn. Well, right, and was but he like, also, by the way, here's some really distressing nationalism. Right, but even when he was saying America's left behind, how did he say it? He said, We've sent trillions of dollars overseas. Well, we that's the stupid thing stupid people think. Yeah. That we're spending a yeah. zillion dollars a year on foreign aid. We spend nothing on foreign yeah. aid. You're a moron if you think why that. Are we, why fucking, are we it's like the cornerstone of his explanation for why America has fallen yeah, behind. People already believe it. It's a brilliant thing to tell them. Why are I know, we, but why I, are just, we I don't I can never credit him. He won. I know, but I cannot credit him for any intention for any of this. I agree with Maybe that. Maybe he's a fucking Machiavellian genius. But for me, it's just he is as stupid and loud as us. That is, and it's just yeah. a, a perfect like melding together. He's, it required no effort on his part to like fit a shape. We are already created the shape, and he just like walked that's through it because that's the yeah. size. In some ways, he he's he's actually like beholden to this idiot crowd. He doesn't really wield any ideological power. He can only kind of adapt. And and fit into these spaces is like a perfect little sponge vacuum. Well, of what Hillary could never do. I, I of, what, of what we uh, watched of the speech, I that we weren't just yelling over. Uh, <laughs> we were we were yelling. Yeah, yeah like, I, I, the, what I heard, I was like, it was well, funny though. <laughs> this is the message that got him elected president. He said the word factory probably five or six times. Yeah. He said jobs probably twice as many, much as that. The parts I did hear that I really liked is when he started talking about gangs. Yeah, you guys remember yeah, that? Yeah. He, well, was he like, thinks that he American was like, the gangs cities are. Death Wish Three. Yeah. He thinks he that's like, what they're like. He was like the gangs. By living in Manhattan, uh, and, the, yeah. the, the giggler, you're done. <laughs> today, today is the day we say no more, <laughs> folks. Folks, we're bringing back the white gangs. It's sing songs. Okay? <laughs> you know, remember the, the the sharks? They were great. They had those matching jackets. They had choreographed dance routines. But Wait, I mean, the sharks I mean, is the, a Puerto Rican gang. Ah, fuck. As, <laughs> as, I had a fifty fifty chance. As as a uh, as a Chicago and. The evolution of how conservatives talk about gangs has been interesting in my lifetime because, like, when I was born, it was sort of coming out of the crack act epidemic, and there was, you were still very much safer, even if you traversed through an inner city as a white person, but there was this fantasy of being stabbed, knockout game, and it would happen at a higher clip to people who didn't live in those neighborhoods, to people who weren't black or Latino or whatever. But now it's just completely, like, Chicago has been resegregated economically in a worse way than it was in the 70s and 80s. And gang violence, it really does just affect, like, poor people, black people, Latinos who live in those neighborhoods. And so they would bust out these arguments to conservatives and be like, not really have their heart into it as much as they would during the 70s or 80s, and be like, uh, you know, it's uh, gun control, yeah, working really well in Chicago. But Trump is trying to sort of bring that like '80s demagogue yeah, gang shit back. Yeah, because he's fundamentally an anachronistic yeah. figure. Yes, he's an '80s business guy now. I mean, the, none of those people that we saw like at the National Mall, the MAGA people, or none of those fucking chuds in the crowd today. None of them give a shit if, like, you know, uh, people in Englewood in Chicago shoot and kill each other. Well, but yeah, but they uh, they would find it kind of funny and cool if the cops started shooting. Right, them. right. They would feel like protected. It was just another dog. It's just another racist dog whistle. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it has no factual basis. Uh, my other uh, my other reaction to just watching the inauguration on TV was uh, who made Missouri's Roy Blunt uh, oh, MC Hot? I'm oh. smoking that loud <laughs> blunt. He kept <laughs> coming back <laughs> with that fucking Lego Fisher Price hair like, snap on haircut. He was elected solely on the basis of that hair, and now he just. He looks like his whole face is squinting. <laughs> he was, I don't even know how you do that. How, how does how does my man's face look like a bunch of paragraphs? It's like his <laughs> face is being sucked into a drain pipe. He was elected. He's like a, a fucking tobacco company a congressman, right? And yeah. he was elected Senate. I, and I remember hearing it because he was the uh, interim House leader, I think, after... Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, he just kept coming back over and over again. But it, honestly, I, I, this is a question I have. What was up with like the military dudes just kept coming behind people? And that was be, like, so unnerving. Of them, like, in the middle of Trump's speech, all of a sudden, six dudes in uniforms stepped right behind him. And for a second, I honestly thought, oh, this is the coup. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to tap him on the shoulder and say, come with us, sir. <laughs> I was like, "What? Why is he? Do- Why are they moving around behind him? Yeah, That's bad stage management." I thought it was some management. Order sixty six shit. I actually assumed, like, for a second, I was like, "Oh, is there someone in the crowd?" Yeah, someone's got a gun. Yeah. What? Do we- okay, let's go through uh, all the religious presentations. Oh my god! Yeah. I don't think we have the time. <laughs> yeah. First of all, uh, yeah. there were two segments. They had an intermission and then more religion. Yeah. Yeah, Timothy Dolan, who is a monster. Basically, yeah, he's the mastermind Fucking of an international freak. criminal cover up of child molestation. Talk about Pizza Gate. Yeah, Pizza yeah, Pizza Gate was happening right in front of him. You fucking dumbass uh, maggot shuds. Uh, did yeah. you see? Well, no, he's did a you monster. See Dolan dining at Comet Pizza. Uh, I saw the uh, entire Vatican clergy. They were here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I believe it was Virgil who had the best line. He said that he looks like the. Uh, the, I, I look uh, like he looks the like Cardinal. Yeah, no, I look he looks like Timothy Dolan looks like the Cardinal in Sin City. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the perved out and, and, and also Cardinal. is he and he is, is that. that. <laughs> yeah. I, I, is I mean, isn't that American exceptionalism? Like in the UK, where Sam's from, the powerful ring of child molesters <laughs> they live high off the hog on big government plans. They're doing it in taxpayer owned, uh, taxpayer owned buildings. Castle. Ours, uh, they're doing it we in do it. Parks. Yeah. yeah, ours the clergy it's the backbone of america spotlight american exceptionalism <laughs> can we just talk about rabbi marvin yeah oh my okay. god Stay, the, the real star of the show Straight all right central casting <laughs> all right i want to uh, know how many pepes literally killed themselves so, when he came on stream so during uh rabbi rabbi marvin's speech Amber texted us and said, Felix, do not tweet what you're thinking right now. <laughs> but uh, technically, we didn't tweet it. I didn't tweet it. We just it. broadcast just it, it a lot. But uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it was like it was like you, Trump's uh, Trump's desire just to uh, you ever read the profile of him where he's like, I play the music really loud at Mar-a-Lago to piss off the Palm Beach establishment here, which is like those are your people. But anyway, he was doing the same thing here. Because yeah. he brought, like this guy might as well have just been like yeah, I'm Rabbi uh, Auschwitz Torah. <laughs> uh, I work at the Diversity Center for Open Borders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think Jared brought him in. Yeah, I said this that guy is probably the biggest piece of shit in the universe. Oh my God. I know nothing about this person, but I know like Jewish Twitter was furious because yeah. they had immediately had like a docket on him. Jared and was like this piece of shit. Uh, <laughs> hashtag respect for Trump uh, really opening it up and saying I'm in, I'm embracing all Judeo Christian faiths by <laughs> yes. having somebody who's like a fourth century schismatic. Yes, who believes Paul in monophysism. White. That's well, amazing. He followed to me. the rabbi too with someone said that our, our only access to God is through Jesus Christ. Yep. He said that Franklin Graham. Yeah. After Franklin Graham. That- Franklin Graham Jr. But one of the women yeah. who believed that's like yes, Jesus Christ, who had no divine presence, who was purely purely a human being. That was uh, like, yeah. That's- excuse me, uh, Council of Nicaea. Much? Yeah, I just want to get out here and say fuck Augustine. <laughs> <laughs> yo, where my donut is at, yo? Why are my Nestorians in the house? As far as the inauguration, like I guess the underlying message of the speech was the same as he did on the campaign trail, but like now he's actually president. And it sounds like this time he actually hired someone to write the speech too. It, he, it, it was the worst speech he's ever given. Yeah, it's uh, terrible. No, but it sounded written. Yeah. Oh yeah. Was, yeah. That's it why it sucked. Written. Like, I mean, it was probably Kushner. Yeah, how, how, I, it wasn't Kushner. It was, it was uh, Miller, I think. Okay. I think that's well, the name of a speechwriter. But someone wrote it. But someone else wrote it, but he paper, also posted but... that fucking picture of himself as if he were right, which he obviously didn't. It's yeah, just no. it's, no. it's like it's he like he doesn't write. He shoots from the hip. Every time he like every time he posts a picture of himself like doing work, it's like it's like from DJ Khaled's Instagram where he's like pretending to be on the phone. And he's like, I'm talking to the CEO of iTunes. <laughs> they said they had to shut it down because I got too many downloads. <laughs> it's the same, just childish idiot. Yeah. Energy. No, it's a lot of him signing things. He likes to cut things. He likes to shake hands. Well, so like, he, he likes like the appearance of lots of paper and lots of pages as yeah. long as he doesn't have to actually read them. Yeah. Very much so like a success win guy who just yeah. posts pictures of themselves at the bank all the time. You you say you sign autographs. I sign business deals. <laughs> it's exactly that type of shit. No, it sucked because it was prepared, and I was just really hoping he would go out there and wing it like he always oh, yeah. does. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. All the no, this is way around for the State of the Union. 
So, yeah, so I was, th- I, I, I was thinking. Well, I think it's fucking two yeah, hours long. Two now. hours long. I can't imagine when you we're talking about William Henry Harrison doing a ninety-minute fucking inaugural address. I mean, how could Trump do a two-hour fucking State of the Union address? How is he going to read Easily, all of that? He loves talking. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, can't, but can, yeah, well, without winging it, he nah. loves winging. He right. loves improvising. Can he read from a prepared remarks for two hours. Because remember, there was that moment earlier in the campaign when he was getting really nailed for not having any kind of foreign policy or knowledge, and they wrote him a speech to give as like a policy keynote and he's about halfway through he just started riffing but I, so I, I, fingers crossed yeah, that'll happen at the I, end. I, I kind of feel like Trump only really wanted to be president so that he could just be on everyone's TV yeah. at any time, time he yeah. wanted so I mean like like he might just be going he, he might you know go feed Al Castro and just kind of give speeches constantly you know like you know he wakes up in the morning he's like folks folks we gotta do something about these bath mats they're too thin <laughs> they're too thin the bath mats in the White House they're too thin Sam we were saying that like the best way to prevent anything from happening was to show Trump the clip of that huge gator and Florida. <laughs> he's just he's so easily redirected that he would just be like, we have to get the gator. It's too big. <laughs> he just, he, he, he sends like bad. fucking US CENTCOM to occupy Florida. Meanwhile, they don't pass anything. There are no drone strikes. Like that's just, the end of the all American the resources Empire. Are Everything being is dedicated to that gator. He said something about how Rand Paul would be like Oh yeah, Rand Paul would be like, Mr. Trump thinks that there's a magic solution to beating the gator. <laughs> <laughs> but there's only one one thing that the gator has against Mr. Trump's jackbooted thugs. It's called the Constitution. <laughs> if President Trump wishes to use letters of marquee to apprehend this prehistoric <laughs> reptile, I will be the first to support him. <laughs> but he is not doing that. Yeah, you know, the uh, back to the State of the Union thing, I was just thinking about it. Uh, I guess unless he does a special thing, it won't be until next year, like a special session like Obama did. And you know how... Uh, congressmen during Obama's years would uh, they invite special guests just to troll the president and yeah, dumb yeah. shit like Steve Nugent or the Duck Dynasty asshole who are the Dems going to invite Rosie. as their troll guests Rosie. I just want to put this out there us yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I reckon J.K. Rowling uh, oh, yeah. and all the Harry Potter characters are going to materialize <laughs> Eric so Garland there. I have to oh, say, like, yes, oh. Eric, yes. it gives me great hope for the future that the piece of art that most inspires the resistance people who are in charge of stopping Trump's policies over the next four years is something where the good guys triumph by literally waving wands around. Yep. That's a good sign, I think. I'm going to write a sequel to Harry Potter where you're, uh, Jonathan Chait uh, makes it so that it's a charter school. <laughs> <laughs> Hogwarts. But like, okay, my main takeaway is like, and this is why I was just yelling at the screen the whole time. It was so stupid. It's so stupid. It's like, okay, I know we were stupid. Obviously, we're a stupid country full of dummies. It's like every current is pulled towards like just re- reassuring people of their ignorance and telling them that it's good so that they can, you know, contribute to whatever, you know, meat grinder of commercialism we have going. But motherfucker, having it, like having that guy up there being president it was genuinely just i didn't feel like i was in the real world i felt like i was in a really heavy-handed 90s sci-fi movie well yeah this is what it's it, just it's it, like it's like a fake simpsons film you know you may remember me from such films as president baby yeah, exactly. <laughs> president baby it's goes like, to as, china as people have pointed out it was literally a simpsons joke 15 years ago yeah. yes. when lisa becomes president and she says we, I inherited a pretty big deficit from President Trump, and that was a joke. Yeah. But like the real feeling it was, it wasn't just surreal. It was a surreality born out of the sense of every, all the humor that I enjoy has always been at like poking behind the facade of America to reveal what's really there by exaggeration. Mm. But now the exaggeration is real. Yeah, like, there's no room for depth metaphor anymore. No, you know, like, 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 like Frederick Jameson said, like in like the, the late 1970s, at the era of depth metaphor, you know, like psychoanalysis and Marxism was kind of slowly coming to an end, and now it really has finished. Shot like, like, the fucking there's, head. There's nothing to analyze. No, it's, it's like it, it's it's like you know the whole of America has just been gilded. Right, and that's what's so freaky is because like people like me who feel powerless in general, like we get a little sense of power by our ability to decode. Right, like that's where we can find a feel agency as well. All right, I'm being you know manipulated by this machinery, but I can decode what it really means. 
with Donald Trump up there taking the oath, like, wow, what am I, I can't, there's nothing to the code. It's literal. It's, it's literal. literal. And he's not a man who appreciates irony or metaphor. You never see him laugh or sim- there's no metaphor, nothing like that. He is a literal man who is the literal embodiment of America. And there's no, there's no lampooning it. Well, and the media is completely unprepared for this entire thing. Uh, totally too. unprepared. I mean, like the idea, you talk about decoding, they became completely addicted to that. Everything became media analysis. Everything yes. became uh, some sort of like smug liberal satire uh, or just like actually, uh, you know, George W. Bush said this when actually this is the reality. And it was just like these little fucking fact checkers who thought that they were doing something useful. Oh. The most recent thing uh, was uh, someone from ABC News was saying, you know, Trump said that no other inauguration has had uh, their inaugural concert at the Lincoln Memorial, but both George W. Bush <laughs> and Obama did. And he's like, why would he, he literally asked, why would he lie about something so easily checkable? It's like, you don't get his whole thing yet, do you? Because he doesn't fucking give a shit, you idiot. He doesn't give a shit about what any of you think. They're from an era where politicians got in trouble if you could we catch them you. in an yeah. uh, absolute... If like a politician's entire job was alighting the truth without doing something that could be called an actual lie. Because then like all the buzzers went off at media headquarters and they put another scalp you know, up on the fucking wall. They don't realize that it does. He does not matter. He'll lie like that yeah. because he, you can he, point it out all day. What the fuck difference does it make? It makes no difference. Like, it, it, like he may as well have said, you know, like folks, this is the first inauguration. It's never happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's never happened. He would do that. You he zero. would do that. And when people say, uh, "No, it's not," he'd be like, "Yeah." And just let it walk away I, I, and leave them fuming and steaming. Ooh, Mr. Trump, your claim that you don't have to sleep and you can levitate when you concentrate <laughs> rates three out of four Pinocchios. <laughs> Uh, that your uh, cum cures HIV is mostly true. <laughs> Mr. Trump, during the State of the Union, when you went off the teleprompter and pointed to the crowd and said, my man laughing. Look at him. He's laughing, okay? He, he was, was not, not laughing. <laughs> and, he, and his shirt was not tight. He, he does not, in fact, know. <laughs> Trump, when, when you said that the universe was created with your birth and it will die when you die... The, well, the second part may be true, but the first, we have to challenge you on this. <laughs> uh, when we were walking around, uh, we were walking around the mall yesterday. We weren't there today. We were walking. We went to the Washington Monument, went to some museums yesterday. Mm-hmm. But everywhere, like first of all, there's like cages everywhere for this like parade. It's just like, walking down the street, but like you'll see signs. You'd be like the Donald Trump like inaugurational first aid tent or whatever and I think like what we said is that it seems like this is a movie set like yeah. like that they're about to film something here that's like some sort of fictional event but well we were walking down the street by uh, by the National Mall and there were uh, they were doing sound checks and I remember we walked out of the Air and Space Museum and we heard like it was this eerie oh, yeah, or it was a weird, music eerie chanting yeah. I honestly Stopping felt like starting. a fucking altar was going to rise out of the middle of the fucking the reflecting pool with a strapped down virgin on it and they were going to cut her fucking heart out. And what I thought about it was, you know, this is like it, it reminds me of this trope I see sometimes. It was in one of the Hitchhiker's Guide books. It's that aliens are real when they, they come to Earth but it's like too cartoonish to be believed. Like they come in like goofy flying saucers that look like they're being held up by strings and the aliens are just like a total trope and it's like like uh, the people wouldn't believe it. Well, if you, this is like a bad foreign satire. This is like the Italian version of Married with Children and how, what they think about America. And what one thing that I hope comes out of this is like from this whole fucking disgusting depraved affair is I hope this finally, I know it won't, but I hope it finally disabuses the liberals and the West Wing and the Sorkin fans, the people who love all this pomp and circumstance and have all, so much respect for our institutions. I hope it finally disabuses them of these childish and stupid notions to respect this office and this inauguration and everything like that. Yeah, and because no, they yes. have always believed that that office is imbued with dignity because of what it takes to acquire it, because if they're I, meritocrats. I would invent and Trump to shit on them, to do stupid, that. Stupid, violently ignorant, sexual predator TV host can just blunder like Leslie Nielsen in a fucking lesser police academy movie into the White House, then those institutions mean fucking shit. You, you know what you know what made me sick in like two thousand nine was when people would be like like Sean Penn when he's like, I love looking at my beautiful, smart president. And he's, <laughs> 
books that he reads and everything and be like, you people need to respect the office of the president. What better rebuttal to that than to have a guy who's going to use the office of the president the few hours that he's in there a week to bitch about like Ben Silverman at NBC. Can we end this episode with the Sean Penn Kid Rock duet? Oh, yeah. oh yes. yes. There is. Yes. Yeah, I mean, he is, he is, they are advertising Melania's jewelry line on the White House website. Yeah. QVC TM next to it. It's so it's good. On the White House <laughs> website. That's it's so, I mean, it's, she's an entrepreneur. It's better she than, sells her ju- no, wait, jewelry and timepieces by so Melania. I, it's that's so that's the it's best so thing about that is the best thing about him. I mean, all the Judd Lagoon people are like, do you realize that Trump can, uh, you know, walk out of a currency conference and short sell the British pound, and then it's like his imagination is not big enough. <laughs> yeah, but like his idea of like getting one over on the world is like, okay, I'm going to put Melania's jewelry on the website, <laughs> and I'm going to charge the Secret Service rent it's in my yeah. building. It's so chintzy. It's yeah. so low rent. Like all these like big like yeah short selling and conner- he is. Way too stupid so to do any of that. Chintzy, idiot. it's grifting. But you know what? We've always been a chintzy country. We've always always been a country of grifters and the grifted. And Hell I consider yeah. Trump yes. as the reversion to the mean. And, yeah, but short con, not the long, not the smarty act, Alec guys who like rent an office building and like have parts and stuff. Soap with like a prize. The, yeah, in yeah it. soap with a prize saying, in it. Yeah, I'm saying, like oh, I dropped my wallet. If you're here, uh, yeah. If I'm you s- give me five dollars, yeah. Not a charming paper moon rhino. <laughs> I'm saying we have a he's country. a predator. Fucker. There are respectable hustles. He does nothing respectable. I want to make that clear. We are proud of being a hustler. I'd say nation. we've always been a country with depraved no, the, institutions. Yeah, the, no, he's the dark side. Where our economic structures, our power structures, always been just very bleak. And we finally have a president who ha- is at the level of respect that these institutions deserve. And it's, I, uh, yeah. yeah. Like, like the main job of the U.S. president is to create a market for American arms manufacturers. And, and like, like, all Trump is doing is also adding like some branded shot glasses to the red. <laughs> <laughs> For today's topic, let's join now a group of young people at the National Education Program Workshop in Searcy, Arkansas. Unless we understand and work effectively for the principles upon which our American way of life is founded, the structure will crumble and our heritage of freedom will perish. In our republic, we have representative government, not sheer majority rule. And isn't its authority divided into three branches, the executive, legislative, and judicial? Yes, it is. A third major reason for accepting our citizenship responsibilities and working at them is the presence within America of socialists and communist propagandists dedicated to the establishment of a new order. The communist fifth columnists among us are working for world dictatorship. To accomplish this, their strategy is to undermine the confidence of our people in the American system and the principles on which it stands its basic godless philosophy. If every citizen, young and old, will accept the challenge of his citizenship, then the socialists and communists and their followers will not prevail, and America will go on toward the fulfillment of her great world destiny. Dr. Clifton L. Gaines, Jr. was our instructor. This is a continuing series based on the unique political and economic system which has made America great. You and I had the same thought watching the watching the inauguration, which is that I thought this is as dumb as a monarchy. This is as dumb as all of the stupid bullshit well, you guys it's great do. Great now too, because because now our 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 presidential ruling class look like European aristocracy, <laughs> like they're just like mutants with no chins. You yeah. really yeah. the inbred Habsburg. I, I feel really cosmopolitan, to be honest. I you, yeah, right. <laughs> you, like, you, I, 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 like I was I was at the inaugural parade. Like I just came here from there, which was like the most boring shit I've ever watched in my life um, and you know like occasionally I just kind of thought okay well yeah we make our kind of um, royal guards wear Marge Simpson hats but but like that, that's just kind of like we all know it's stupid and yeah. you guys like invest the institutions of, of your 
democracy with so much seriousness, yeah. you know, like like like, o- like over the tannoy, the guy was kind of going and and please welcome the liberal justices of the Supreme Court who will be throwing aborted fetuses to the crowd, <laughs> and everyone was just shouting and booing and spitting on them, and but but th- there's this kind of driving expectation that everyone can kind of. Everyone can, can can just kind of exult in the in the reasonableness of your of your system, and it's it, it's a joke, and that's what makes it funny. Sorry, We're, just a just a clip from the actual parade today. Uh, I got this hot news from uh, Michael Keaton's Instagram account, <laughs> but it's a photo of the television, and there's tractors going down the street, and his comment is inaugural parade. Gotta say, though I may not be a fan to say the least, really cool tractors. <laughs> I have to say that I am oh, a big he's fan one of our people. I, <laughs> between that and what Trump said. Between what that and what Trump says about bringing back military parades, the uh, him, him him reintroducing a Brezhnev era Soviet aesthetic to the U.S., I'm in favor of that. Yeah, I really yeah, thought yeah, that yeah. would happen. I thought there would be you know like all the American nuclear missiles. No, you got to give me a minute. Though. What from the Senate to today? the White House and then Obama being was like, look, uh, that's not who we are. Uh, we're gay Muslims. We we're, don't have nukes. We're going to do a LGBT EDM show for all the people that have died in the CIA's history. Yeah, but uh, if he gets inaugurated again, it's just going to be fucking nukes. But yeah. the thing that got me is like, okay. We have an oligarchical government system that needs some sort of popular legitimation ritual so that people don't fucking rise up all the time. I get that. But at this point, I feel like the Trump administration is just proving that voting is just the dumb way to do it. Can't we just have the president be the guy who wins the Nathan's hot dog eating contest? (laughs) (laughs) That's what you said, Matt. That's what you said during the Periscope, that no, this is dumber than a monarchy because we pick our head oath. I, I just had a thought. Of, of a monarchy and how you know the Trump kids seem to have all the monarchy diseases. Yeah. I just had a thought. It's going to be woke to support Eric Trump because you're like, oh, you, got yeah, you cr- you criticize him. He's even though he's disabled, he has coward ass, <laughs> uh, uh, Habsburg, Habsburg nutsack, and uh, and idiot eyes. If you put a picture of him next to a oil painting of. Uh, Carlos the Bewitched, you cannot tell them <laughs> yeah, apart. Yeah. They're identical. I bring up Michael Keaton because actually uh, last night, uh, Matt, you and I uh, got home and we watched uh, the Tim Burton Batman until about five in the morning yeah. until he we went to sleep. And my thing yesterday was like, and it's confirmed today by the inauguration, like it was like the balloon parade at the end yeah. of the Tim Burton Batman where he's just throwing money at his slob fans and just being like, and then, and then yesterday, hubba, hubba, hubba. <laughs> who do you trust? <laughs> this country Country needs an enema. <laughs> and now, folks, it's time for who do you trust? Hubba, hubba, hubba. Money, money, money. Who do you trust? Me? I'm giving away free money. Uh, I mean, <laughs> yesterday, yesterday when we went to the National Art Gallery, we just think like, t- tomorrow, Trump is going to go in there. Oh, hell, the new king in town. Gentlemen, let's broaden our minds. <laughs> just shred, just destroying every fucking painting. By the but way. yeah, no, big... Big downgrade for me for for Trump for not unleashing Smilex gas from giant yeah, parade. That would have yeah. That By the way, that down. art gallery, uh, John McNaughton. There's going to be a new <laughs> wing of that shit. Uh, well, I, we we should talk about we. I mean, we've spent way too much time hitting Trump in the right. I think we should talk about the real enemies here, the libs. And <laughs> yeah, can we talk about Chucky. What's that? Schumer. Oh, oh, right. Oh, yeah. Chuck Schumer was like... Oh, my God. He's the face of the opposition now, and so he had to have his little moment before they actually inaugurated the vice president and president. Has know? anyone fact-checked? Has anyone seen... Like, did Obama do this? Did fucking Mitch McConnell give a fucking speech? Out of I that? do not remember. Uh, yeah, he sang, uh, he sang that Kermit song. What's it called? The uh, Rainbow Connection? Because he's a fucking turtle. No. Uh, yeah, Schumer... Did, people were booing him, too. Cause yeah, he was people said a lot. in the crowd were booing him, uh, chanting... Uh, uh, Train yeah, drain the swan, some shit like that. Uh, yeah, you know, like Schumer, un- unimpressed with him. Worthless. Yeah, if he, if he is the thing between us and and annihilation, then annihilation is inevitable. No, he's not, he's not standing in between. They have, he's mediating. They, they have no, a not, he's mediating. He, they have a, we, they, the Democrats have a not insubstantial minority in the Senate. I mean, they can't stop anything from happening the way McConnell did. They absolutely can if they commit to it. McConnell, but, no McConnell, a guy with nakedly no shame for his. The fact that McConnell has left his house looking like that no his shame. entire no life. Shame. Really? <laughs> People think they could shame him, but the Democrat is born in shame. And the, the Democratic mind is so shame-oriented that if 
anyone comes along with a scheme for them to pay other people to exist, they'll do it. Schumer hyper cares about what other people think yeah, about him, what the like, dailies say when, about him. I guarantee you that if they start stonewalling a uh, a Trump uh a SCOTUS nomination or something, someone's going to say, you know, you complained about this when they did it to Obama. Oh, God. And they're, they're going to go, God damn, you're right. Oh, you're right. No. I don't want to be a hypocrite. He reads the fucking editorials in AMNY. Well, and that's the thing we know about Obama, people. the fucking smart president who's so much smarter than fucking uh, Trump is that he obsessively read every bubble-headed, centrist shithead columnist in America from Jeffrey Goldberg to Krauthammer to David Brooks, he sought these people out and like cared about their fucking opinions. Yeah, that, that, we should shovel dirt on that idea for any yeah. president, which is good that Donald, Donald Trump, Trump doesn't read, actually. Real people. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, yeah, that's one of those things where like Trump never listening or even knowing who these people are. I mean, that's already a, a step up from Obama. Wait a second, we can, we can, but then there's a, we, we can talk about owning the libs in a second. But I think much more importantly, can we now own the city of Washington D.C.? Shit, yeah, it's shit, because mate. I honestly, it's okay. bloody rubbish, mate. <laughs> okay. It's a bloody rubbish town. I want to, Virgil. I want to get into this. The the incident that happened last night that I think sums up uh, everything. In the, uh, that went down today and in this city. Okay, so we uh, we we were at a little get together, uh, and it uh, ran at, out, at it, DNC Zach's and, house. Don't and, bury the lead. And it uh, it ran out of it ran out of booze because uh, we were there, and so we had we to go make a hard, run. fam. We had to make a run, and we're in some fucking D- Duponts or some bullshit. No, man. well, yeah, okay, beer run on a beer run. Any in, in New York, First problem. five minutes. That's a five minute There's trip in New York. Max, yeah. max five minutes. Five minutes is you don't know what you want. If you want a fucking tall boy, you're in and out 30 seconds, right down the street. That's it. Everywhere in New York. Okay, so our our beer run that uh, Virgil and I volunteered to do, along with uh, DNC Zach, uh, became just an, a fucking ordeal yeah, so of like trying to find places that were all closed. There are no bodegas in the city. There's no like corner stores in the city. It's just like endless fucking wasteland of bistros and assholes. And uh, we're we uh, the fucking they stopped selling booze at midnight. Awful. Awful. And there's appears to be exactly three locations that want to sell alcohol. Even it's not illegal to. So we end up walking for like what fifteen minutes well, to some yeah, fucking like, it, 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 to it, it, a fucking it, it, Chinese restaurant. Yeah, it was just, it was a ch- half Chinese restaurant, half like beer and wine. To, you know why not? Yeah, what why the not? classic combo that we yeah. all know to love. No wonder Pizzagate's so a thing be- because people from other parts of the country like they see this and like this is not normal. <laughs> this is not right. Well, the I, point I is mean, like it, after about the second place that we tried to go to to get beer was closed. God, Virgil was so frustrated that like just <laughs> on the street he was just goes, oh. What the fuck is wrong with this city? And immediately after he does it, this a real life lanyard, lanyard confronts him and goes, dishes. "Actually, nothing is wrong with this city." <laughs> <laughs> and Virgil, is furious, goes, "What are you talking about, you fucking dope?" And what I liked about that is because, like, New York City again, not to compare it to New York City, but you know, I'm a New Yorker. Real if you, if you, yeah, if you are a New Yorker and you're walking down the street under any context and you see someone angry just going what the fuck is wrong with this city i hate it you would just think hmm that sane and rational man seems to know this what he's talking making, about hey, this guy's making some good points <laughs> yeah. making the mayor yeah. and every shitty town in the midwest where i'm more familiar people would just be like yeah fair enough yeah yeah like i feel like i kind of recognize it because like after the after the second world war in england the government decided to build a bunch of new towns called like shitting buzzards and you know <laughs> twatsbury on the lee and, and, and they're, all, they're all built in the you know like kind of as one big business park you know like they had um like the, the idea was to model them after america lots of straight lines and low buildings and like a, a pleasant place to live and work and dc is like if one of those minor English new towns was the center of the fucking world and could destroy <laughs> everywhere else. If As it I wanted. said, to begin this, we're in Mount Pleasant right now. This is where yeah, we're broadcasting like the fucking from. Hank Scorpio town. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, unfuckable was it, town. Was it you were saying? We, so we, we we also go into this fucking party. It took us an hour to find a fucking parking. It took space, an hour to find all of these complex fucking parking rules. And matter, I think it was you who said this is a city built for people who love rules. That was me. That was Felix. That was Felix. Yeah, no, it's a it's built. It's a city built by nerds who love rules. 
a hundred percent that the same sort of you know mentality that created the Affordable Care Act. Yes, mm-hmm. like ooh, you get to go in the exchange and you get to pick your plan. Ooh, ah. We get to log on. Can we talk about these fucking getting around? Anything, doing anything Awful. takes Nightmare. so fucking long Nightmare. because every fucking street light, every walk sign is one minute long. Yeah, insanely long lights, Wait. stupid fucking uh, roundabouts, British style, Euro roundabouts that do not make it easier. It's a Le- lot of rubbish. Inefficient. Awful. Let, let me paint the scene for you. Last night, we're all piled into the SUV. Already done about at least a half an hour looking for traffic. We're all losing it. We go down an alleyway that is sort of like all private uh, parking lots and stuff just, just to like go through to another street. We get to the end of it. There's another car in front of us. Then a city truck pointing the opposite way. And a guy in like a reflective vest just runs up to our car and goes, sorry, you got to go back. <laughs> and I, honestly, I nearly had a panic attack. Yeah. Yeah. That was our Get 13- me out. That was our 13 hours moment when yeah. we get stopped by the, the checkpoint. And, oh, my God. And John Krasinski's got the gun. It's like, I got I got eyes when up. When we top. finally found an actual like parking garage, it was at like the Washington Hilton or yeah. something. Then we got lost inside there. We did. And that scene at the, the Washington Hilton last night was, Dark. Like, was like the Overlook Hotel, but boring. Yeah. No, yeah. It was there a were, bunch of Ralph Stead. all the rules were. This yeah, is it for was, valets. It was, it was, this is for compacts It was only. a bunch of uh, Ralph Steadman drawings in evening wear it was a nightmare mm-hmm. like there was this fat dude in a f- in, yes fat dude <laughs> fatter than me that's what i mean when i say that uh you uh, made a look but like a fat dude in like a fucking tuxedo with like a dumb little bow tie and like a like a nightmare melt woman in a in an evening <laughs> gown uh, it was like so it was really glad ties, i wasn't yeah. tripping yeah, i would have okay, let's talk was, about yeah sam let's yeah, talk yeah, about the oafs and the bow ties yeah, yeah. yeah. like 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 i've seen like Every single type of kind of conservative monstrosity here. <laughs> yeah, we need like, to like, talk like, about like, that. Yeah, yes. like, like the kind of like the kind of like the gleaming kind of um, like, okay. Like I feel like the average Make America Great Again hat wearer is this guy who is clearly the only baseball cap he's ever worn. In. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and and he like he, it's it's like um, it's like he's had like laser hair treatment on his entire face. He he looks like he's been computer generated. He's wearing a suit that's exactly one size too big for him, so he can grow into it when he goes to college (laughs) (laughs) but like uh like the day before the inauguration like yeah we were walking around the mall and there were just kind of all of these trump guys who were clear like no one in dc supports trump you know because he broke all the rules right so so they're all just kind of like wandering around like kind of yeah, like, that was like what half I dead bumblebee. That's what I noticed. Kind of like not knowing it's what like, they're here. It was for. so de- yesterday. It was I just it felt so like seventies uh, Bucharest. Like it just <laughs> felt like Iron Curtain shit hell. Like just Brezhnev uh, doldrums. And like part of it was all the dead dead fucking grass and everything. And it's always a bummer just trying to navigate the. Uh, the, the center of DC because all of the dead space with nothing in it mm. it just kills your like ability to your will to live but like like also all of like all of the fences and all of the helicopters flying overhead and it kind oh, of God, reminds yeah. me of like like the new villages that the US built in Vietnam yeah <laughs> like a fucking strategic hamlet <laughs> yeah 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 but like that was the thing so everybody was bummed like all of the people who lived there were pretty down the people who were there for the women's march were were depressed mm. but like even the MAGA fuckheads they weren't like happy. They were like grimly, maybe sadistically pleased that everyone else was unhappy, mm. but they had no joy. They're still themselves. themselves because they were still themselves. I mean, yeah, I'll, that I'll, was the thing. They yeah. thought this would be different. They thought Trump winning the impossible dream would change their wa- world, but they're still waddling around DC, <laughs> chafing their fucking thighs in their stupid hats, taking all sixty seconds yeah. across every I wanna, intersection. I want to <laughs> talk about the like MAGA frat guys. Like oh, all God, those, those guys. fucking guys. It was every like you know what they appeared like to me. Like if you ever like played football in high school or something. Yes. Or you like I was the, I was the quarterback by uh, the way. I was the quarterback uh, in all the games. I was the coach yeah. and quarterback. But like if you like knew, I was like, one entire team. This is, this is a very like this is a very <laughs> suburban thing. Is when a guy has a big fat son and he's like, when he starts deadlifting. <laughs> He's gonna be in the NFL, <laughs> but they just never no, do it. They're just they fat, never do they're just it. Ra- they just stay. F- they're just fat round kids. Yeah. Oh, like, I I was I was so mad yesterday. Like I hell yeah. I have been. Matt was pretty surly. I was really mad. And the thing is, like, I have not really been around any kinds of concentration of Trump fans since the election, and I had kind of forgotten how much I've like viscerally repulsed by them. And I am so glad that you don't 
have to pitch to them that there's that they're small enough they lost the popular vote that there's no electoral strategy that like necessitates some sort of earnest pitch directly to Trump supporters because when I was around them all I wanted to do was vomit directly into their faces. These fucking perfectly round, like snow snowman. They were like snowmen. There were so many Colby's. Like they were three round balls on top of each other with a fucking MAGA hat. These turds. These guys, like we were at the Air and Space Museum, and these two dudes passed us on the escalator. They were perfectly spheroid with MAGA hats on. That and was actually like, that was actually Sputnik. That yeah, it's like at. if you if we lived in the austere social Darwinist world that you claim to want. They would melt you into axle grease on the first fucking day. They're, they're, well, it's not the world. The, uh, it's, the, it's the world they claim to right, want. Right. They don't really want it. Well, no, yeah. but like, it, it's the world that they're going to get because, yeah. I mean, the guy who looked happiest at this fucking inauguration was Paul Ryan. Yeah. Oh, God. Every time. That is what terrified me. Like, Trump looking like a kind of confused grandpa was funny. Everybody else was either annoying or, or irritating. But they would cut to Ryan, and he had the most rapturous oh. look on his face. He was dreaming of death. Dead orphans freezing to death in alleyways, and it was bringing his heart a joy that he had never known before. When Trump Imagine got- there's no retirement age. <laughs> when, when Trump, <laughs> that horrifying image, I think, of Trump sitting in the, the, the kid's chair, getting to sign his name and just smiling, like looking and, and, yeah, at and, it. And, and, like, and, and Paul Ryan's it. right there. Paul Ryan, they're like, just... He's going to have that legislation. Like, look. here's another one Everyone. for you. Paul Ryan and Mike Pence and Mitch McConnell, these grotesque, grotesque human beings. Yeah, it's like they're going to be like, hey, Donald, we've got a new piece of legislation for you. It's the called the um America is great Trump president forever act and you know it like it's it like legalizes recreational you know uh uh making it, it makes fucking the world's the most dangerous game illegal, you know. <laughs> uh, and they're like, "Ooh, make America great." Sounds good. I, but I, I, I mean, he like, signs it with his stupid, idiotic, nonsensical fucking signature. When we were, it has we, a Mont Blanc, but it has Mickey Mouse on it. <laughs> <laughs> when we when we were in the uh, Air and Space Museum, just like all the MAGA suburbanites were ambling around, like. Uh, yeah, you're going to let me fly the plane? Yeah. You, we, <laughs> won. That means we won. We won. We won. That means I could fucking fly I it. fly all the planes. But, but like, they, but like they, don't, yeah, they don't, like, they just, their joy was limited to yeah. that. It was just, like, it was limited to, like, we're going to be on top another yeah, few years. Like Everyone else is mad. It's like they all walked around like they'd been smacked in the middle of the head with a fucking sledgehammer. But, like, they had no real initiative or joy or anything. They're, they were disgusting, and yeah, I yelled at them. Like I was, I would just like yell. Uh, what I did in the, by the way, what I did in the Air and Space Museum is in the World War II exhibit where they have an actual uh, German Messerschmitt. I uh, stood in front of it with a sign that said, "Ask me about my Luftwaffe Historical Reenactment Society." <laughs> what I did at the Air and Space Museum was uh, walk around and frown at all the phallic symbols. <laughs> I was like, okay, so. Donald Trump is president, right? Like we're, we're like <laughs> so funny. This is this so happened, funny to think about. you know, it's yeah. it's official like you know there, there's no going back, folks, but um yeah, now and then like walking around and, and seeing seeing the maga people and there was like the fucking deplora ball last night. Oh shit, I saw Nigel Farage. Oh really? Yeah. How's he doing? Uh, by, how how I, drunk was he? I was by Union Station and he was just kind of standing with a bunch of other kind of greasy, slimy Brits in their big over uh, overcoats, like having a fag. Um <laughs> And I kind of did a double take for a moment. I was like, oh, shit, that is Nigel Frog. So I, I shouted, prick, fucking wanker. <laughs> and kind of turned around with the look of a man who has been called a wanker. <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of had not expected it here. <laughs> um, and I think that's, that, that's like probably the best thing I've done for the left in my yeah, entire Yeah, I life. like the idea that they're always going to follow him. Like, he could go to some, like, you know, remote town in Iceland and there would be some <laughs> English guy going, Wanker! <laughs> we get around, yeah. <laughs> like, they don't even know who he is. They're just shouting Wanker at Yeah. <laughs> but, okay, so now I'm, I'm we have I'm to... not a neo-Nazi. I'm, right. not, I'm not a neo-Nazi. So now it's, it's, it's a good time. That's Nazi as good time mom. as any. Punching Nazis, good. Burning limos, also good. Uh, let me just say this. Um... You know, fascism wins when you sink to its level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like if you if you punch a Nazi, then you kind of become a Nazi. And if yeah, you burn true. a limo, don't you kind of become a limo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, dude, I, dude, I burned I burned a limo once, and now since then, rich men are inside me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that's the whopper of Bow. the week, right there. <laughs> 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 Woo! By the way, if you how, are, how many of y'all like sex? <laughs> 
Uh, if you are that person who punched Richard Spencer, please email us for a free premium. Oh, yeah, account. absolutely. We'll, we'll give you a free t shirt. Free shop a t shirt. Also, if by any chance you were listening to the show and you were the group of five to six, I would say 14 to 16 year old. Those girls ruled. <laughs> oh black my God. girls. Yes, that we saw, yes, yes. The group of like five, you know, four to five, uh, like I would say 15 to 16 year old black girls that we saw in the National Mall just straight up in front of some rude MAGA family just yell fuck Donald Trump and then start laughing just hysterically and they were so mad you know they were it's like we won that shouldn't happen yeah. anymore that's why what? Trump inserted that gang thing at the last second yeah. because this was happening <laughs> yeah. teenagers yeah. were yelling well, I mean, it, but the first religious guy did that reading from Timothy that was just literally like, okay, people are going to stop making fun of you. God will punish them. Like, that was, that's literally. Yeah, these bitches are in for a very rude awakening. It's like, yeah. No, yeah, it's like, no, you're going to get roasted forever. As the yeah. Bible says uh, in uh, Corinthians the second, uh, wow, some liberal tolerance. No, that is, <laughs> no, that is the fucking. So now, the rest of their lives are still going to be a gaggle of fucking 15-year-old black girls mm-hmm. laughing their asses off. That's yeah. the move, though, for those guys. Like, the, you know, when you deploy the elite regiment, the Proud Boys, it's just like, <laughs> sir, permission to get beaten up by a child <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and, and then post, uh, wow, so much for the tolerant left. Uh, I must That's have triggered granted. them. <laughs> Great. Wow. That, the teens are so good. Well, this is right what I was thinking. Yeah. Teens are great. This is the new best I've ever been. Uh, the teens. Other, other hero, <laughs> another hero I'd like to shout out. Teens are the, future uh, adults. Other hero I'd like to shout out is uh, the Antifa Cody. Yeah. Who was interviewed on TV after setting something in fire in front of the deplorable. My dude. He was like a set eight year old kid and he was like, I did it because I wanted to. It's cool. Yeah. Do I look like a fucking liberal to you? <laughs> Yo, and then he says, Screw Donald Trump. Excuse me one second. Pardon me one second. Very right, soon. This, uh, this fire was started. In fact, this young man, you were participating in the fire. What's your name? Uh, my name's Carter, and I actually start, kind of started this fire. So why'd you start that fire, Carter? Uh, it's Carter. Carter. Sorry, why'd you start that fire? Because I felt like it, and because I'm just uh, saying, screw our president. Okay, well, there you have it. Yeah. <laughs> that kid was amazing. Children are our future of people. They really are. <laughs> yeah. But like I, I was thinking this like about like the deplorable people, um, like these people think that they're like they. I mean, like in a way, they're right. Their guy won, right? And here's the fucked up thing: like they won, okay. But the thing is, they think that they all contributed to that effort in some meaningful way. They're like, we made this happen with our memes and whatnot. And my thing about them is like. I guess, like, at best, like, it, it should bother me, but at best, their lives will remain exactly the same, which is to say... Shitty. Terrible. Horrible. It's miserable. No, but, like, but, but pro- I don't think so. I mean, in some way, I don't think they're ever going to figure out that that's what happened. I think they're going to do exact. They're perfect neoliberal subjects. They're going to do exactly what all of these middle management people do and, you know, make fucking vision boards and, and fucking believe their, themselves out of this misery until they're just grinding their teeth into pow- powder. They're absolutely going to be like it's great we won they will coast on this for six years before they finally go postal but I, that is inevitable though but, here, but, inevitable. but here's the thing but though, it's like, going to be a long time I, I agree that they will be in denial for a while but the reality check is going to come no, but, but, like, insane. for these people winning is no longer being afraid that someone else is going to fuck their wife and that's <laughs> never going to happen <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah. I mean, this is actually this is make I mean this is sad, like you know my sadistic heart is being made happy here because they've been able to cope with the miserable failure of their lives by blaming minorities and like some sort of liberal conspiracy but now with daddy in the white house after a long prolonged uh, attempt at renegotiating this new world and like convincing themselves that things are good now are going to come to the horrible revelation that things aren't and then yeah they're going to blame finally for the first time themselves they can finally no well, no, 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 gonna, no it's going to be edipal here's what's going to happen uh, chuck chuck, Sh- chuck schumer is going to vote for all the legislation and they'll just blame him <laughs> yeah <laughs> he ruined it with his jew touch but <laughs> amber uh, i mean like if liberalism is just uh, looking at the logical narrative conclusion of your vision of the world and saying we failed mother, uh, <laughs> hard, far hard right is the same thing, but failing father. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, Amber, what's a, a horseshoe a, theory, baby? What's Woo. a neoliberal subject? Um, I think it's someone Am who I is one? so fully. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we are all. But like the idea of one. someone who so dutiful, dutifully uh, accepts. Uh, their place in the neoliberal world and the inevitability of the the entire economic system and like well, takes the ideology hook line and sinker. So am I one? 
No, I think you no, understand that thing, too. But yeah, that's, a different. Different. that's a different You're a gamer thing. American. That's not neoliberal. You're a gamer American POC. I mean, like, like the, the neoliberal subject is like the one who imagines, them, imagines themselves to be like a you know, kind of free, independent agent engaged in a kind of general marketplace with, uh, with everyone else. So that means just kind of not voting, uh, living by yourself in a cell and being in prison. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what this uh, solution to being a neoliberal subject is? Remember, remember, the 5th of November. <laughs> <laughs> a little guy from history, he was imprisoned and killed in 16-whatever. His name was V for Vendetta. <laughs> so you're saying we need... He uh, was a trad ab- Catholic. We, yeah, exactly. Yeah. We need an absolutist Catholic monarchy, yeah. which, parenthetically, Ross Douthat jokingly Boss said Ross. That, uh, that Timothy Dolan should declare we need a Catholic monarchy. And of course, like every weirdo Catholic online was like, indeed, we do, sir. We need the guy who uh, whose entire job the last 30 years was c- making sure that uh, child abuse victims didn't get money to be in charge of the government. I mean, think about what would be perfect practice for covering up deep states shenanigans. <laughs> it's like on the job experience. Yeah, it's like, we're sorry that we drone striked your son. Here's $2,000. <laughs> yeah. uh, I know how, to, how that works. Yeah. So like we, we, we've already done like over an hour, right? Yeah. So I was a just solid like, goal. Yeah, so, uh, we've we've all had fun, but like I I I, I genuinely I, as much as I'm hating on the city because I like hating on any city that's not New York, which I also hate. But um, thank you. I, I so far we've had a great time in D.C. We've met a lot of fans of the show. Even Felix and I just now at the convenience store were accosted by some young chapos who yeah. wanted to uh, tell us how much they like the show. But no, we've had a, a good time. But like at the same time, just walking around and then watching this monstrosity on television. Like, I can't help but be overcome with the feeling that, like, just the worst people in the world are now in charge of it, and there's, like, almost nothing we can do, and, like, it's just, it's all bad news all around, but, and I hope, like, you know, this isn't too out of left field, but, like, I do, I don't want to let the show pass since the last time we record to note what I think is, like, one of the few unambiguously good things that have happened in, in of recent memory, which was uh, Chelsea Manning's sentence being commuted by Obama at the last minute. Fuck yeah! Don't give him a lot of credit for many things, but I—I I mean, he put—he put her in jail in the first place. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's not nothing, and I think it's like I said, an unambiguously good thing that she's going to be free. And every single person who complained about it or got angry about it, I hope they get fucking stomach cancer. I'm giving, I'm doing, yes. I'm doing a spirit cooking hacks on every one of these pieces you of shit. Manning for a reason that they will never quite hate Snowden because with Snowden there won't be the same level of hate because. To them, he escaped and he's fine. They hate Manning because she lives this value that they think is t- totally theoretical and impossible to live. Sacrifice. Well, right, because their good. big own on Snowden is, well, you didn't face the music. And Manning That makes did. you a bitch. Manning and, did. And she did, yeah. And they, their entire and lives. They also, they also, they hate breaking the rules. They, they love the rules. And she broke the rules. I mean, you see all these. That was all of the fucking. Anno- anno- wow. Gonna. You know, she did break the law, everyone. Like, these, that's the entirety of the fucking critique. These fucking pigs who made up people that they know, where they're like, I have 85 gay friends who have security clearances, and they're mad about this. I mean, first of all, no, you don't. I don't believe you have any friends. Second of all, <laughs> but yeah. se- second of all, like, oh, wow, people with security clearances. You mean the freaks who have never smoked weed in their entire <laughs> lives and did so, did so from the age of 12 on, hoping that one day they would get the chance to sign off on a piece of paper authorizing the fingernail pulling of some <laughs> poor prick in fucking Bagram Air I, I, I said it. I said it already. Actually, like, I, I, I do want to do actually maybe even like a, a full show about Chelsea Manning because I think it's an important issue and I want to talk about it and a slightly more prepared context, but I I do want to make note of it and say again what I said on the day it happened, that I hope everyone really angry about it gets stuffed into a van and then shot from a helicopter with 50 cow bullets. You are really angry. Take names now. If you're really angry about this, you're not a liberal, you're not a Democrat, you're not welcome, you're not my friend, you're not my ally, get fucked forever. Yes. That's an easy one. It's like the burning limos thing. So easy. Very easy to, easy call. And I want Chelsea Manning. All I, good. I do kind of want to give an addendum to the Manning thing, though. Um, I, I can't tell anyone how to feel right now. Like, uh, if you feel hopeless, I can't tell you not to. Yeah. But I don't think, like, in a political conversation, I kind of hate dead enderism. And look, we all 
are kind of forced into this slot of accelerationist now accelerationism now. Matt talked about it. We are all the V for Vendetta guy. But you know, I think if Manning, who continued to put her message out there, to continue not just have that, but to have solidarity with people who are also in solitary, who did it like in her statement to Glenn Greenwald as she got out. If there was no dead enderism there, we shouldn't have it. And uh, we're happy to have you as an audience because you you guys have never just been content in agreeing with us online. You're out there in the fucking world and uh, no dead ends, 2017. Let's do it, baby. <laughs> right on. It. Cheers, guys. Washington, D.C. How many of y'all like sex? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> District of cum. <laughs>